there was an interesting question few few days ago and it says that how do we see that the individual is a product of the universal mind there is this notion that the individual is a separate thing an entity which is independent and has its own existence and the universal mind is somewhere high up there in the sky somewhere in the other dimension and is not even accessible to the individual this is usually the picture one draws when they hear about these things that there is a universal mind and if we are a part of the universal mind but they don't really understand because they say that i am here in the physical world i have no access to the universal mind how will i ever know about such a thing so you can clearly see that uh, this kind of thought is there this kind of ignorance is there because of identification with the body when they say i am down here and i do not know anything about the universal mind they are actually equating their body with the i and therefore the solution is to know the essence of what this i is and then you will know what it the universal mind is so i already answered this question and the answer was like this in only one or two lines that when we investigate the reality of the individual we do not find any individual and all that remains then is the universal it is very easy actually you de- don't need to hunt for the universal mind that let me find it where it is what kind of experience will give me the experience of the universal mind which strange experiences in which extraordinary abilities are going to show me and to and are going to connect me to the universal mind this is not the right approach there is a lot of ignorance behind such thoughts as long as you have assumed that there is an individual which can go and meet the universal it will never happen the key is to investigate whether there is an individual or not and you will find that there is none whatever is called an individual is simply a thought is simply a belief which is based on our social conditioning if you have not investigated what is this i who am i then and there is no good chance of knowing the universal so there are many ways to find out the reality of the individual and on the path of knowledge we use the direct way that we try to point to the individual for example and uh, just like we point to any other object i can ask you to point to the individual and most of people will point to their bodies that here is the individual but that is the body that is not the individual the body keeps changing the body is not permanent one derives a sense of individuality from the body that is another thing but it is not the individual most of the body that we the individual had is gone now and the individual will never say that i am gone they will always say that yes the bodies are coming and going bodies are changing a 20 year old will say i am in the same way a 80 year old is going to say and so on and uh, you can point to anything in this whole system in this whole layered system and you will find that these are only thoughts of individuality some things were associated with being the individual and if you remove this thought of the individual whatever remains is now universal this is how we discover the universal mind the current mind the current experience is universal experience not an individual experience the happening of the individual or the ignorance of the individual or the concept of the individual arises in this universal mind not in the individual mind the individual mind does nothing because there is nothing once this individuality is dropped you will find that everything is happening on its own instead of the individual acting the universal is acting instead of the individual taking birth and dying the universal is doing it these are the processes in the universal mind of birth and death of taking various forms and discarding those forms so those who know that this universal is also not me i am something which is not even the universal mind i am the witness of these processes i am the witness of the minds whether the illusory individual or whether the universal i am the witness and this universal mind is also an illusion it is also impermanent it is also coming and going it is not in the beginning it is not in the end and it is not in the middle 
Now, this is the direct method and if it does not work, like the identification remains at the body. The person can say, for example, that I am the body but the body is changing, but I am it. And uh, the person can also say that I am the memories or I am the thoughts. And if that is taken away, there can be a thought like I am the universal mind now or anything which is intermediate such as the causal body. So we use a more uh, detailed method which is uh, progressive elimination which I have described in the Path of Knowledge series also called the traditional Neti Neti method. So you check whether I remains or goes when one of the experience is examined whether it is memory, whether it is a causal body, whether it is universal mind, with anything. And you will find that everything is an illusion. Everything comes and goes. I remains as a background of these changing illusions. And now you can drop the universal also. And you can say that there is only me. Whether it is universal or individual, it does not really matter. This division was never present. All there remains is the experiencer and the illusory experience, which is then found to be one. The experiences are arising as non-physical and non-mental vibrations in the experiencer itself. There are no two. So that division can be dropped by checking that there is no separation between the experience and the experiencer. And when you investigate the qualities of the experiencer, as we have done, in this series, you will find that it is absolutely empty. It has no qualities at all. Whatever qualities and whatever forms and names are seen are illusions and if you remove them, if you treat them as false, then absolute nothingness remains, absolute emptiness remains and that is the nature of the whole. That is, that is how I am and that is how the universal mind is and that is how the individual is and that is how every object is from the tiniest grain of dust, particle of dust to the huge mountain and the whole universe and the whole universal mind. The universal mind is same as the universal memory that I talk about in the video series. If um, you are confused, that is because I have used this word universal mind in the past, but then I have found that the word mind is very confusing for many people. They think that it is a subjective event of some kind, which is right actually. That is what minds are. So I removed it, I replaced it with memory, which is also confusing, but is more clear than mind. Now it is possible to understand the whole world, the body and the layered structure as a form of the memory. The memory has organized itself to produce all these Seemingly individual forms, they are not really separate from anything. They are like waves on the water. It is impossible to find a boundary of the wave. The boundary is arbitrary and they arise in the water and they collapse back in the water. Something similar is happening in case of all the forms. There are processes in this memory that will brand or that will delineate a form and call it an individual. It totally depends on the ignorance present there. If the ignorance is too much, then the boundary of the body is taken as boundary of the individual. This is how the individuality is extracted out of the universality. It is only thought. What is the utility of this thought? You will understand it very clearly that it is necessary to survive and therefore it is there. Nothing happens in this universal memory without a reason. So this drawing of the boundaries, arbitrary boundaries around the body, let us say, or around the mind that the person is going to say, look, I cannot see the other minds. I cannot see what is happening behind my head and I cannot see what is happening in this other country. That is my limitation. I cannot think anybody else's thought and so on and therefore I am not universal. And all these boundaries are there for a good reason and the reason is survival. There is this phenomena of uh, Assuming forms and the forms, if they are not separated by one or the other means, will not survive. There will not be any wave in the water if nothing distinguishes the wave from the water. It must take an illusory form and it lasts for a while and then it is dropped in the water, disappears in the water. Something similar is happening. Some of the forms, they will stay for a longer time. Some are so fast that they are not even perceived. So where is this universal memory? It is here and now. Whatever we are experiencing right now is the universal only. 
This is the simplest answer. There can be more follow-up questions like, how can I become the universal man? And the answer is very simple. There is no I. There is no I at the level of individuality. So there is no point of this question. It is not possible to become the universal. Because the universal is absence of the individual. And when the individual says that, how can I become universal? The only way to become universal becomes to drop the individuality. It can be done right now also. Investigate the reality of the individual. It falls away and you can say roughly that now it is all universal. The individual does not become the universal. The individual disappears and universal remains. It is very easy. How can the wave become the whole pond or whole ocean? Just stop being the wave. Now it is very uh, amazing that uh, the wave is not going to disappear. Only the ignorance needs to disappear. Only the illusory bond boundaries need to be seen. That's all. That can be seen by simply trying to find the individual. You will never find it in your experience. You will find various boundaries which are a product of the ignorance or which are due to necessity of survival. Since this uh, question falls in the category of the illusion, sometimes it is not possible to show it. The person or the individual will remain trapped in the individuality for a while. So there is something interesting that is happening. This whole structure is evolving towards greater universality. Like it is giving up the individuality slowly. And so we just let it be. There are some paths on which this evolution is pushed so that there remains no doubt in our minds that I am not really the individual. My boundaries are assumptions and so on. And when you follow those practices, when you uh, follow those paths, the doubt is completely removed. On the path of knowledge, we do it using direct experience and logic. And once the doubt is removed, you abide as the universal or you abide as emptiness because uh, if there is duality, there is universal and individual. When there is non-duality, the question does not arise. This can also be called liberation. Liberation while in the body. The forms need not be dropped. Only the ignorance needs to be dropped. Some people have this odd belief that if the body dies, I'll become the universal. No, you can try, but it is not recommended. If it was so easy to become uh, the universal, whatever that means, it means nothing really, then we would have highly recommended to kill yourself first. Kill this body. That would become a path. But you know it very well. There is no such path. Because the body is just an empty shell. If you kill the body, the individual does not go away. The illusion remains. Because the reason of the individuality is not the body. The reason is ignorance. The reason is this firm belief that I am the individual, I am not the universal, this, that will remain forever. Remember that the body has been killed millions of times already. Still, there is individuality. So that proves that killing it once more, destroying the body once more, will not work. The only way to come out of this individuality is through knowledge, investigation, experimentation, direct experience and logic. That clears the mind of this ignorance and we see that I was never an individual. There was no individual since the beginning and there will not be any in future. The strange thing is and the assumptions will be dropped but the function of the individual will remain. That function need not be destroyed also. It, it can function as an individual. This layered structure of the memory can function as an individual, as a body, as a mind as a causal body also. This is the game that it, that is going on and that is also harmless. Nothing is gained by destroying this, these things and nothing is gained by keeping these things. Nothing is gained except the knowledge. We do not become anything. The humans do not become anything. They remain humans. Liberation does not make you anything else. Simply drops your ignorance. That's all. Why don't you become anything? Because there is no individual to become. The whole is becoming the individual. The individual will never become the whole. The water appears as waves. The wave will never become the ocean. The ocean appears as waves. This is very simple logic. This is common sense. 
So stop trying to become the universal. Stop trying to become the whole. Just see the illusion of the individuality. This is the direct path. Why are they meditating? Why are they doing these experiments in the universal memory? Why are they trying to get the powers and so on? Because of this basic ignorance that I need to grow, I need to evolve, I need to expand, I need to get more experiences that are of the universality. As long as this belief is there, as long as this uh, belief in individuality is there, however subtle it is, the effort will continue, the path will never end, your seeking will not end. On the path of knowledge we end it like this.